I've got a little philosophy, uh, which is uh, real writers don't write, they write anyway. I never thought I'd be able to publish a book, I wrote one anyway. I never thought that a screenplay of mine would be made into a film, I wrote one anyway. I had lunch yesterday with a friend who's asking me about some uh, uh, screenwriting, for some screenwriting advice about, sort of businessy advice about uh, opportunities that came up. And he said that I had said to him probably three or four years ago, because uh, he was talking about how do you get jobs, how do you get uh, things made. And I said, well, for me, um, it's the same with the book as with the script, is um, for, write one. And that seems ridiculous, but for books, you, all you ever hear about are the deals, you know, I got seven figures on three chapters. Well, that never really happens. And uh, most people just write an entire book and make it the best goddamn book they possibly can. And then somebody wants to publish it. And, and I had said to him, if you want to do, if you, you know, if you want to do write television, um, get a sample. Mm -hmm. Write something you really, really, really love. And uh, so he did that. And he did it... Um, only wanting it as kind of, uh, only expecting sort of feedback to see mm -hmm. if he could get feedback from people, and uh, someone bought it. So he's been, Fantastic. his first script has been uh, purchased, and which leads to further work, yeah. because you know, somebody says, oh, they're, pay they're paying you for something, then my God, we've got to hire you for something else. Um, so that's, that would be my very, very first advice, which is to uh, don't write, write anyway. Even if you think it's never going to work, write, write anyway. anyway. And when you write, do you write for a particular audience in mind, or do you write for yourself? I hear a lot of people who say that actually they don't like thinking about who's going to read it so much as they want to just say something, tell their story, and then they might refine it. Well, I mean, everything, everything I've tried to write for other people has not worked. Mm -hmm. Everything I've, when I've tried to guess what a market might like, when I've tried to guess what a reader might like, it's never really worked. And uh, I call that, um, I call the, 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 what, the, what's worked for me, I call it writing with joy is if I'm really burning to tell the story, mm -hmm. if I'm really wanting to go back to it every day, well, mostly every day, it's, not, it's <laughs> never every day, uh, if I'm really excited about the jokes I get to tell or the scenes I get to write, um, then that's, when, that's the only time people have ever responded. And uh, if you look back at something like J.K. Rowling just sat a, at a coffee shop with legal pads, working out the Harry Potter world, and really wanting to... Um, tell the story that she was absolutely thrilled by. Mm -hmm. and she, I think she got 2,500 pounds for her first advance. You know, and I bet she was thrilled with 2,500 yeah. pounds. But I think the reason people respond to Harry Potter, one of the reasons, I think there's lots of reasons why people respond to Harry Potter, um, one, of which is the, one of which I think is the utter cleverness of the house system. Because mm -hmm. I bet I could ask you instantly, you could instantly answer, which Hogwarts house are you? Does everybody know? I'm born and bred Ravenclaw, sadly. Um, <laughs> Because I always say, because Ravenclaw are, are the really good students. They always, the house cup is so important to them and they never win because they're always in the lead. And then Gryffindor comes in at the end with like a hero cake. <laughs> and, uh, oh, 10 points and you win. And, uh, and I always say that um, Ravenclaws get our revenge later in life by denying Gryffindor mortgages. Um, <laughs> but she just wrote that story because she wanted to tell it. Yeah. She had no clue of the, what would happen. Because mm. like, so, nobody was looking for that. Nobody's looking for that. She just wanted to tell a story that she really wanted to tell, and that's when people respond. And that sounds, you know, that sounds, oh, the nobleness of art. Mm. But really, it's, it's about, uh, if you're, I, I used to read coverage for a couple of production companies who still, they still, they would accept spec scripts uh, unsolicited. And so they had readers, and mm -hmm. uh, most of them were just terrible. So that's another thing to remember. You are, you are competing against um, a lot of non-professionals who, mm -hmm. who have no interest in being trained or in what the rules are. Um, so worry a little bit less about the competition. Um, but of all, I know I read a couple hundred scripts for them, and uh, there was one that was, uh, it was a kind of a Fast and the Furious mm -hmm. script about getting around the M25 in under an hour. The whole thing was this race about trying to get around the M25 at midnight in under an hour. And that doesn't sound particularly overly distinguished. You know, it's not the English patient. Mm -hmm. But um, that's a film from the 90s, young people. <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, but there was just such spark in it. And yeah. you could tell that these guys were having a whale of a time. And you, I yeah, they've yeah. possibly done it as well. Well, maybe, maybe. Yeah. But they're just, the joy was in it. Mm. And I thought, these are guys you want to work with mm. because they are really genuinely writing, writing yeah. something like that. And so do you think um, that writers who, who succeed, obviously if you're a writer for yourself, they've got a world that they're creating. Do you think that a writer needs to be innately visual in the way that they, that they can actually picture everything that they want to see? Or do certain people no, write I mean, different ways? I'm, I'm sure people, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm sure people write 
people certainly write novels very, very differently. Mm. And there's, there's no one right way to do it. If you finish it with a novel, then you've done it correctly. Um, but like for me, the thing that I am instinctively lean towards most, particularly in screenwriting, is uh, pace. Mm -hmm. Is that the shape of how it, how it flows. That's yeah. the thing that I always lean into. And for something like a monster calls, for example, um, when I, in a monster calls, there are two lengthy animated s sections, and um, uh, and they're beautifully done. And I could never have thought of what they did in those animated sections. So in the screenplay, I sort of strongly I structured it how I, I structured the individual stories of the animations how I wanted them to be structured, and I sort of made kind of suggestions about um, the styles that might be used and said, you know, I, this is a, more of a black and white shadow puppety mm -hmm. thing, this is more like an oil painting, always assuming that somebody would come along who is way more talented at that than I yeah. ever could be. And, um, and that's where collaboration is really, really exciting because yeah. someone brings in stuff you could never have thought of. So, so my, but my, the thing that I really feel is important is how, uh, how a story is shaped mm -hmm. and, um, and then, you know, other people come in and mm -hmm. do their bit. It's interesting, obviously, if you were brought on board uh, by such an enthusiastic sort of family um, at class, did you then remain as involved in terms of um, the cast and then oh, yeah, you go yeah. on set? You, you basically yeah, I was, you're there, not a... I was there almost all the time. I mean, I mean as I'm an exec producer on the show and I took that really seriously and because uh, I really... There are really, really things that I believed in, mm -hmm. things that I, uh, and I had very strong reasons for why I believed in. It doesn't mean that I'm always right. That really, really mm -hmm. doesn't. Um, and that's why you get good people to work with. Mm -hmm. uh, and you don't win every battle, and you shouldn't win every battle. But, um, but by God, if I had a strong opinion, I was going to be there to say it. Mm -hmm. um, and if somebody had a better idea, then fantastic. But, um, but. Uh, um, yeah, so I was there. I was there every day. It was a long casting process. Really involved in the mm -hmm. casting. Really involved in. Um, I we I interviewed, not interviewed, but I you know I talked with all the directors before we hired mm -hmm. them, and just because it was just so important to me to get about. To, a lot of people think they know YA, mm -hmm. um, but they get some key things wrong, and so I would just talk about, what I believe YA is about that. Um, the most important thing is agency. Who has the mm -hmm. agency in the story? Who controls the story? And it, it can't be a show about a bunch of teenagers sitting around watching adults do stuff, which is what a lot of mm -hmm. non-expert YA is. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and I had you know, opinions about the, the boundaries at which we could push, the boundaries which weren't interesting to mm -hmm. be pushed. And uh, you know, so it was just, it was just uh, I'm stubborn and um, really passionate about the story. And, um, and if you can do that and not be an asshole, um, then uh, you know. Then, then hopefully, uh, that's. The, I, I feel like that's the only time you even have a chance mm. of making anything good. It doesn't mean you're going to make something good, mm. but to me, that's the only time that I feel like I have a chance. And so, have there been any other people that you've watched in the in a similar role that you've learned from, or you, I get the kind of impression nope, that you're totally jumped in unique first. and that you don't jumped in feet first. No, but I, uh, I'm not the only executive producer. So we had Brian Mention, who done who's done who for a couple of years, and and Stephen as well. Um, and it just and that's that's another thing. Don't be afraid to ask, mm -hmm. and don't be afraid. To, I mean, I one of the reasons, other reasons I wrote a monster calls is because I wanted to learn. Mm -hmm. I wanted to find things out, and I learned a ton. And I've learned a ton in season one of class. Mm -hmm. I've learned learned a ton of things, and that's exciting, because to me, complac for me, complacency is just death. I never want to get too comfortable mm -hmm. about what I'm doing. I always think I should be slightly afraid, um, or I'm you know, or I'm going to be lazy about it and that's the only kind of writing that really makes me angry mm -hmm. is lazy writing the so. new challenges every time you do something uh, yeah, well I mean that's not new just uh, risking failure yeah. and risking I mean god a class could have been class could have been a debacle uh, thank Christ it's not <laughs> um, but uh, um, yeah but I suppose just uh, not being afraid to do it yeah but being or not being afraid is that's the wrong thing being afraid and doing it anyway yeah Taking the chance. Um, taking the chance. Because what the hell, you only live once.